Hello and welcome back to the road to KSP2. Today we're starting off with the KSS Carthage, and yeah, it's uh, it's doing pretty well. But before we get into anything else, thank you guys for getting us up to 600 subscribers, and yeah, uh, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Uh, yeah, that's really all I want to say. I want to get to uh, 800 by the end of February. That's that's where I want to be. Anyway, we're starting off with the, the KSS Carthage, and uh, yeah, the KSS Carthage is a, uh, it's an interesting vessel. It's going to be the vessel that uh, refuels our, our, uh, our ship out in uh, the influence of Jewel. Yeah, that's basically what it's going to do. Uh, our ship that's, I believe it's orbiting lathe it's going to go to lathe and refuel that ship that's that's its whole purpose anyway i don't know why they just crashed into the ground there uh something was, went wrong with mech jeb anyway here we are with aphrodite 4 it's on its way back to kerbin it's not far at all from kerbin it's uh it's actually pretty close and it'll it'll be there within 30 days so that's that's pretty good uh yeah, so it'll be there right now as we're recording this. Um, you can actually see Minmus and uh, the Mun, and there it is. There's Carbon. Here we are. We are uh, entering the atmosphere at quite an insane rate of speed. I had to drop us down as much as I could. Uh, it was still a little too much, and yep. Uh, craft disintegrated. Yeah. It was a long mission and it failed. Anyway, we're doing Docking Arm 3. Docking Arm 3 is a mission that will go to the Taichi Station. Taichi Station. And it will uh, add another docking port for, you know, more Kerbals to be up in that station as it will become a fully functioning space uh, space station up there in the orbit of uh Kerbin. yeah and yeah it's uh its purpose is to just help facilitate the orbit um one thing i did kind of want to uh talk about right now is that we're only five episodes away from the end of this series and I kind of want to know what you guys want me to do for the end of this series. Uh, because I only do one episode a week, this means that Kerbal Space Program 2 will be out after episode 5. Like, instead of the episode that I would be posting that Friday, I would be posting the first Kerbal Space Program 2 video that I would have. And maybe I might continue this series until there's a, a, uh, what's it called program? Uh, until there's that, but I don't, I don't think I will. I think I need to do something and I think what I need to do is send a cruel, uh, crude, a crude mission around, uh, I think, uh, I think it, to every planet. I think I have to go to every planet for a true crude mission um, for the last episode. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch it, do everything for the last episode. But if you want something different, please tell me. Oh yeah, and by the way, to explain what's going on on screen is I have a docking port. Uh, well, this thing has no, uh, it has no brain, basically. It has no way to control it, so I am controlling it with this little robot that I send out that kind of goes out there and picks it up and pulls it in. It's pretty simple, and uh, it's pretty great. I uh, I like using this method. It makes it so there's, you know, less just things that control the space station. I, I feel like they're kind of pointless if you... and just kind of a waste of money, so that's my main reason for doing this. Anyway, the way that I deorbit here, I found particularly interesting. I uh, I skipped myself off the uh, the atmosphere. Uh, I did a little bounce. 
so I could uh, get to where I wanted to actually land. I thought it was pretty, pretty intuitive to do this little bounce to get closer. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't really hurt my heat shielding all that much. But yeah, here I am coming in at the KSC. I'm coming in a little far in, and now I'm coming a little bit too close to where I'm supposed to be. So I use the shape of the <laughs> of the craft to actually help it fly to where I needed it to go. Yeah, I, I love aerodynamics. They're so stupid. Anyway, uh, now we are launching the Nyx Hab. So the Nyx was the uh, the station core for the thing that we sent around the Mun. Uh, so that that little propulsion unit that's out there. Uh, this is going to be the HAB unit. Uh, yeah, it's just meant to go out there and yeah, just chill out there. Kind of just uh, be out there until I can put, uh, throw the next mission out there, which will put the um, basically like a crossbar like structure so that we can add the docking and I would say like a miniature lab module onto that section and then yeah it'll basically be done from there anyway so we're kind of low on uh on uh, actual uh fuel for this mission uh over here with the the first stage and I thought I could do this by myself since manually, well not manually, since with the mech jeb I'm having trouble actually landing the craft recently. I don't know why, I think it's because mech jeb updated but my client is not so it's freaking out. Uh, I, I really don't know why, but you know, I, I have five episodes of this. It doesn't matter. I have I have a ridiculous amount of money. I only have five episodes of this. There's not really any point to do, you know, actually like freak out about it. So I'm I'm not really. I I actually don't even need to be doing reusable missions. I do them just for, you know, saving money, kind of making it a little bit more realistic. Even though I'm doing shit like this. Uh. But yeah, here it is, it's coming in, and I tried making it land correctly, but yeah, Purple Engineer is wrong as well. <laughs> so yeah, it failed. Anyway, again with the second stage, I tried to do something a little bit different than normal. I'm going to shoot the second stage out to the Mun, as you are seeing right now. It's, it's going fast enough to reach the Mun in just a, like about one day. I think it only takes a day to get there. So it's going that far out. Now it's going to, the first stage is going to circularize around the Mun. But I'm going to disconnect and fly back the rest of the craft. And it's going to slow itself down enough to land at the KSC. Yeah, it's it's kind of nuts. It's uh, it's a lot of fuel spent, but honestly, it worked quite well. Um, yeah, here it is coming in. Here I am trying to, you know, slow it down just a little bit, and here we are landing. Yeah. Anyway, here's the second stage back out in uh, on its way to the Mun, and here it is about to go, you know, and dock to the other thing. Granted, it's just completing its uh, circularization burn right now, but it will it'll be, you know, effective in a minute or so. So, yeah. Yeah, we're just slowly rotating at the moment. So yeah, I turned on the run, the rendezvous um, autopilot thing, and now it is going to go and do its work for the rendezvous autopilot. Yeah, and it is kind of dark. I turned on the light so you could see where it was on the screen. I apologize for it being so dark, especially with YouTube compression and all. 
but I mean, there's not really much I can do. I've tried to make it brighter, but it, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't do much. Uh, Planet Shine is broken, so it's not doing a whole lot. So yeah, here we are. We're going several orbits of the Mun in order to get our encounter. Yeah, here it should be in a couple days time, or actually pretty pretty soon, maybe even just a couple of minutes. So here it is uh, getting ready to do its burn in just a second, and there it is, there's its burn. And now it's going to burn closer, and I decided to end that, and I launched that thing out into the distance. So yeah, here we are, uh, coming in close. We're using docking alignment indicator to get ourselves the perfect docking position. And we're going to come in quite quickly to this, uh, to this spot, as you can see by what I'm doing right now. And there we go. Now it's ready for the next episode. Yep, and here is our resupply slash recruiting mission of the new of the well of Taichi Station, and yeah, it's it's just here to do you know it's it's thing, it's it's going to dock at the docking arm that we just installed this episode, which is pretty cool. I'd like to say. Um, it's a new craft. It's a new reusable craft. I don't know the name of it yet, but if you guys would like to come up with a name, you can do that. Yeah. Anyway, here it is uh, going up into orbit, and it also has a uh, detachable nose cone, as you'll see in just one second when I detach the thing. Although it moves so quickly, it's only on the screen for like a couple of frames. All right, now, uh, once we reach orbital velocity, I will uh, I will show the first stage landing as it is quite impressive. Here it is coming in at a, a great rate of speed, but it slows down quite quickly due to the amount of uh, air brakes that we have. Here it is coming in at a good place, and yeah, it just lands quite smoothly. Then it kind of vibrates, but whatever. So yeah, I uh, turn on rendezvous auto autopilot and I, uh, I went into the other room and here it is slowly but surely making its way to the station as it is supposed to. Here we go. Here we are, you know, just gonna get out to the station. We're gonna burn in the opposite direction so that we slow down around it or in relative terms to it. And uh, yeah, I let us burn close and then I decided to turn off rendezvous autopilot and turn on docking autopilot. And yeah, here we are. We're going in for docking and we will be able to put our crew on board and yeah so once we get our crew on board I wanted to show you guys something I promised there would be some kind of special I mean it's not like super special but you you know you know what it is it's 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 kind of like something that I wanted to kind of show you guys uh and something that I'll do from now on uh just at weird intervals uh for no real reason but yeah, I, I just thought it would be pretty cool to show. Um, yeah, it is, there's not like a real reason for it other than that I thought it was cool. And yeah, that's coming up right after we dock these Kerbals into the side of this station. Yeah. Here, they're, here they go. They're going in. And yeah. I'll show you it right now. It's a pretty cool clip I recorded. All right, I am here at the UCF Knights softball field. Um, there's a not 
too particularly strange reason for it, but uh, I'll get to it on the inside. All right, so I can't get in, um, specifically because there's a softball practice right now, and I uh, don't want to trespass while there are people who can report me for trespassing. So, um, yeah, I'll just uh, stand on the other side and I'll, I'll kind of tell you why I'm here. All right, so the main reason why I'm here is because not very many people watch collegiate softball. So, this stadium can fit exactly 600 people, plus whoever's sitting over here. And maybe that's included in the 600. I don't know, I haven't counted the seats exactly. But on its official record for the, for the stadium itself, says 600 people can sit here and watch softball so yeah that's the that's the reason i'm here which means that one every single person that subscribed to me can fit in every single one of those seats over there and yeah i thought that's pretty cool yeah now I can't wait till you guys get me into there. So, while they were doing practice, this ball flew over the fence, and I'm keeping it as the 600 subscriber softball. I'll probably write in permanent marker somewhere about that on there. And yeah, yeah that's a cool little souvenir for 600. <laughs> 